Okay, well, no sooner have we said that we needed to probably do brakes and rotors on this than it started grinding. So we gotta do brakes and rotors on this. The added difficulty is it is 12 degrees Fahrenheit outside. Yay. <laughs> It hasn't snowed yet, but it's almost November, and we are just playing the waiting game right now. It's usually there is snow on the ground, so we're gonna take this opportunity to do the brakes and the rotors real quick. <laughs> we went and picked up all the parts for it that we think we need. So here we go. Yep. It's our neighbor. <laughs> just kidding, I don't know who that is. Thank you to one of our lovely viewers who pointed out that with our winter tires, there's a proper rotation that the tread must be. And we were not aware of that fact. So we did come out and look and notice, hey, the uh, there's a little arrow. So we are going to adjust the uh, two tires that are incorrectly on there as far as tread goes. So thank you. Please always point out if we do something wrong. <laughs> There's a hawk. Is there? I'm running out. I'm running out. Okay, here I come. I don't know. I'm over here. Yep. Of course, it'd be really nice to have some smaller things just on us, in theory. I, uh, trying to loosen it. Okay. Or something. Babes, I need you to loosen this. Sure. I'll be buying my own glasses. We could get you ones with sparkles. I, I'd get you some BCG. Okay, so here you have the screw that, or what is this? I'll get you some of uh, this. It is really stripped out though. It is really stripped out. So Richard is not. Actually, it's the rotor retention screw. Rotor, the rotor retention screw, you can see it's supposed to have a star shape. Yeah, we're gonna have to drill that out. We're gonna have to drill this out. Yeah. Good times, good times. This rotor's ready to get changed though. And there's barely any stuff left on the brake pad. Okay. Okay, so, so. the lines there. Yeah. A lot of lines. Not good, I yeah. guess. We should be doing this every changing the pads like every fifty thousand miles. Yeah. We gotta put this in our car uh composition book. Alright, so first you gotta take this little boot off here. That's a little plastic boot. This is the bleed for the brakes okay you take that off you're gonna crack it just to to loosen it up okay and it, uh, we'll start leaking a little bit so we need to put a catch bucket under okay here. and then uh and then we're gonna start disassembling so you need the 13 millimeter the 15 millimeter okay uh wrench because we'll probably have to crack these to start them okay. so today we have the task of changing the brakes on the vehicle Yep, we uh, came to the realization that when it started grinding about a week <laughs> after we got done with the maintenance that the brake pads were actually gone. And upon further inspection, we were down to the metal on one of the brake pads. So Boo. it's a great, uh, great time to play it. Oh. Great time That's to what? <laughs> it's a great time to change it. Change it's a great it. Time. Yeah, so Richard's... Uh, old hand at this so he's gonna try to <laughs> direct me how to do this <laughs> yeah. good luck may the force be with you this 
And right, I just kind yeah, of shake so, it. Yeah, that's the boot for the brake. It, that's the there's a bleed bleed valve in there that lets you bleed off the the fluid in the system. Okay. <clears throat> oh, I got it. There you go. Yes. Okay. Does it come all the way off? Yes, yeah. it does. Okay. All right. We want to make sure to put that over yes. in a safe spot. Okay. I'm. Oh, there we go. There we go. And just open it up a little bit. A little bit more. Okay. Hold on. I'm gonna go up and around this. Now, oh, there we go. Yep. And we got a catch bolt right down there. Now what we're gonna do is you're gonna crack the bolts on that hold this uh, this caliper thing. Back here. Yeah. There's two bolts? 15 millimeter bolts. Hold okay. Two 15. No, because the other other side of that. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. Stop hitting yourself. <laughs> You're gonna have to hit it way harder than that. Fudge! Fudge! <laughs> okay. Get a longer wrench that was up here where we had like more leverage. Okay. That would be the way to go. You're going to get it this time. I can feel it. Yep. See, I told you. I can sense these things. <laughs> Remember when I said I was going to do this? Yeah. Can you? I, okay. uh, I must say it's kind of, it's kind of difficult for a lady to do this with our, our strength. I mean, I'm pretty strong for my height. How am I supposed to do this? You have to have a mechanical advantage. Yeah, I'd have to, but how, like, there's got to be a tool that I could get in there. A break? Yeah, you could break it with a long wrench, but if you don't have, and it's just the angle. Yeah, because it's a. If this was up on a jack stand, you could probably get under it a little bit better, you know, and push up or something. Uh, you know, admittedly, in your defense, this one was glued into the. I mean, these are glued in. Yeah, I know. But this one you're coming up against this, you have barely have any room to to do it. Yeah, I know. Well, I, I'm feeling like that's kind of the, the course with the uh, well, vehicles. They, they, first off, they make this difficult for DIY. Yeah. Yeah, honey, hold on one second. This is a little stuck, so I gotta pound, pound it down a little bit. I think the, okay, the brake pads, the piston's all the way in. So we've got to... Is the e, the e brakes not on, right? No, it's not. Okay. You push on the brakes. It takes the available brake fluid in the system. Okay. And it applies it and it sends it into this housing right here. Okay. Which which pushes this piston out, and that pushes your brakes up against the rotor, which causes you to slow down and stop. Oh. We have to make sure there's not too much fluid in there. Okay. Uh, so actually, what I'm going to do is, can you go? Pop the hood. Yeah. Take the brake cap off. Mm -hmm. The brake cylinder. You know which one that is, right? Yep. I think. Here, I'll get it. You hold it up. Where is it's it? It's right here. Um, oh, oh, okay. Here. I'm gonna come on this side. Okay. And now, where, where does it go? In that. Right there. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Okay. So back here is the brake reservoir. You see that spring right there? Yeah. That's called the coil spring. That's big. Yeah, it's all it's all it's it's uh, the same. We can we could actually they turn these into swords. They melt these down. And you can turn those into a really nice sword. That's yes. <laughs> we need that. <laughs> We need to get you a bigger forge, honey. <laughs> yeah, you Thank you. That works. Okay, so we're set that aside. Okay. And that's gonna start draining a little bit more. Okay. So I'll take this guy off. Ooh. Just now starting to get into the metal on oh, this. Oh yeah, I see it. Oh man. Okay. Yeah. So. I think we get it. I think we're gonna do the front ones here soon too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's that's start that's in the metal now. Oh yeah. So we'd have the same problem here pretty soon. Yeah, it couldn't be down here because I need to have it to where I don't have to worry about it if there's a flood. It could be in that little shack, right? No, it has to be in an open area. I could build you a roof for it, but... Yeah, that'd be nice. We saw that chicken coop. 
I don't want to put a fireplace in there. Well, yeah, I know. Let's see. I don't want anything okay. on this side of the house. I want it all over there. Okay. You know where we had our little, uh, in, the, in the garden area, in that middle area? I want to turn it into a fire pit area anyway, so we can put it there. There we go. Ooh, nice. We just want the rough stuff off here. So you make sure that's the top, that's the outside. So that one should go back here. Okay. No, it is extreme lubricant. It's extreme. <laughs> is it snapped in there? Yeah, it's upside down. I knew it. I knew it. So if I was listening to what Richard said this part here goes there and then this goes in uh, I gotta move this up a little bit here we go does it look pretty good it you, looks... want to, you want to wipe it off all yeah. the way get it clean make sure there's no physical defects on it Ooh, if there was, we'd need a new one of these, huh? Yeah, we'd have to get a new caliper. Oh, yeah, the whole system, right? Oh, this or... whole bit. This whole thing with those. Okay. Not not that, because it's two pieces. That's one, another piece. Okay. If you go through a deep puddle uh, and you wonder how come your brakes are making a little bit of noise, it's because you got water over the brake pads. Anyway, so if these aren't performing well and you go through water water gets up in here and if water and debris get in here you're going to start losing brake uh ability yeah well, not really ability not yet it's just it's going to be they're going to stick because this this causes the brakes to kind of come in and out okay like that okay this is looking pretty worn down yeah it also. is i was thinking that too we might want to we may want to invest in another set of calipers or something like yeah. that for the rear we like to buy two or three deep on stuff. When you need these things, a lot of times in the past, we've come into supply chain issues. We want to avoid that moving along in the future. And we also know that we're going to have this rig for a while. So what we're probably going to do is we're going to buy another set of these calipers for future because you never know when you'll need this. And if you can't get them, then your car is kind of kaput. And since we only have the one car, we need to invest in having a set of set. We need to invest in having extra parts for it. We kind of take this philosophy to many things like the snow thrower, the generators. We try to get extra parts so that we have a parts area. We're almost like a miniature parts supply place sometimes. <laughs> extra hardware, extra parts. You never know when it's going to come in handy on the homestead. I think we should name this the redundancy factor. But what I would do is kind of work it in there. Okay. Like that. And then you can spin it up like this. Okay. And then I'll... That, that seems like it's spinning very well. Yeah, in a good way. Yeah. Well, because these little clips that you put in, they're pressing up against there to hold, help hold it in. Okay. These bigger clips I had, those... What are those for? Well, they're just different if you had different pads. Okay. So... I have no idea what that is, probably to keep it from getting too loose or something like that. I don't know. And the more we put these in there, the, the you know, it's going to help help firm that hardware in there. Okay. There we go. That looks pretty centered to that me. That does. And we bought a tool for that, but it doesn't yeah. work, right? This is the piston that when you press the brake, this piston comes up and squeezes your brakes together. Okay. Uh, there is a special tool that you should have on the Ford Explorer if you want to do brakes. What that tool does is it pushes this piston in and twists it at the same time because there's a spring in here and there's a screw sort of thing. So this has a specific way that it wants to come out. 
But we bought the tool. We bought there, we bought a tool for it because we were told it works, but it doesn't. So we're going to return that tool. But you can do it with new nose pliers if you're patient. Now the specialized tool they have is handy, but you don't need it. You might be able to rent it from like a parts supply store. <sighs> Squeeze it in a little bit. They have C clamps that you can get for this purpose, but oh really? That's okay. what like people used to just use, but then these companies started making specialty. You gotta have to twist it and push it in at the same time. It's really twisting good. Has to get back far enough to where I, the. <laughs> <laughs> that looks really hard. <laughs> that looks That's really hard. Not the easiest thing in the world. <laughs> There we go. Wow, I'm kind of surprised by that. There we go. Now it won't wobble around. Wow, look at that. All right, now. Clever tricks of the trade. So what does that Loctite stuff do? Well, this is a medium strength and it's gonna make it hard for this bolt to come out because this is what's <laughs> holding your brakes on. Out. That's good. It's fine. Put them right. Yep. Okay. One of them. Thanks. Now I'm gonna just put these on and then we'll tighten them up here in a minute. These are supposed to be like 26 pounds on a torque wrench, but uh, we don't have a torque wrench, so. I love that we get to do, we get to have lunch, homemade know, lunch right? by the fire. <laughs> We're like hobbits, we like, we like extra lunches. Why, why do they make everything so fun? I want the old banana boat cars, man. I had that, uh, what did I have, that 1978 Firebird, Firebird? Lower, the sports car looking thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had one of those? Yeah, I did. Oh, wow. It was all tricked out, too. I had, a, like, Edelbrock. Oh, double, <laughs> double pupper. I do carburetor. <laughs> you do not. All right, well, we got the brakes done. I don't know if they work or not, so I went ahead and sent Amy and Liliana off in the car for a test drive. Let's see if those brakes work when they get back. So Richard did not get a cash out on that life insurance policy. <laughs> yeah, the brakes seem to be working just fine. So that's done. Now we just have to do the brakes on the front. But we've got a couple of days we can wait on that one. Yes. Thank you for watching. We appreciate your time. Thank you from Life in Alaska. Yay!